So we have Hussein Nagaria, uh, who is going to be moderator, and he is product evangelist at Frappe and gonna be uh, and a host at hashtag Build with Hussein. And we have a Bhuvana Minakshi. She is a social uh, tech researcher and founder, Women in Tech Collective. We also have Subin Sibi, who is a hacker and tigger. And we have uh, yeah. Vijay Sulochana, uh, Embedded System Engineer. So please uh, give a big round of applause for our moderator and speakers here. Good afternoon, everyone. So this is a panel discussion for fostering FOSS in Tier 2, Tier 3 cities. Uh, before we go to FOSS, we'll have a general introduction of the speakers. And we'll ask them to share their experiences. And then we will delve into some questions like, even before FOSS, what about technology, right? Uh, how that reaches to tier two, tier three cities, how they came, overcame that uh, hurdle and do what they are doing. So I'm Usain Nagaria. Uh, I'm a product evangelist slash trainer at Frappe. You might have seen my talk yesterday. Uh, I run a very small YouTube channel called Build with Usain. And Basically, I am trying to, uh, what do you say, educate people on YouTube, uh, trying to build apps with Frappe. And now, since yesterday's assessment, FOSS, Indian FOSS projects in general. So yeah, uh, that's about me. Now I'll uh, ask Vijay Lakshmi to introduce herself. Mm -hmm. Hello all, I'm Vijay Lakshmi, so executive member of WeGluck Foundation. So I'm, I'm the uh, volunteer and executive member of WeGluck Foundation for the past eight years. So and, and also in career side, I'm the uh, embedded software engineer. So I'm like, uh, I'm uh, four years of experience in IT industry. Works now. Hi, uh, this is uh, Bhuvna Meenakshi from Salem, Tamil Nadu. Uh, I'm the founder of the Women in Tech uh, Collectives India. Uh, we started this self-help uh, network of uh, women uh, who are interested to pursue tech over the time of pandemic. And uh, we've been running this since three years now. And um, I also run this project called uh, Emergeability. Um, where I'm one of the co-founders, uh, where we uh, are more into um, into having an inclusive environment for neurodivergence um, and how they can engage into education and tech. Um, apart from that, I uh, to keep a sustainable contributions in FOSS projects, I engage with uh, Mozilla and uh, Wikimedia communities. So yeah, glad to be here. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Yes. Sir. Hi, uh, my name is Subin. Uh, I've been coding since I was 11 years old, and uh, I, I, I started free software at 13, but I didn't know there was a community in my own town until uh, 2017 something. Uh, so Kerala, every district has kind of a post community already, but I didn't know, it was very late. I got into free software because Kerala schools were, have been doing free software since like 2006. Uh, every system is on GNU Linux. So I started with GNU Linux because of schools, and that's how I got to know free software and everything. So it's in the school curriculum for about 15, 17 years now. And I'm seeing the kids currently is also uh, right, uh, very much into, not, I would say like they're experimenting with very tinkering things with free software. So Kerala is still keeping that education policy. That's really good. And this community is called Free Software Users Group Trishur. It's a, Trishur is kind of like a tier two, tier three city, I guess. Uh, uh, I've been active in that community since 2017. I'm still active. We can kind of conduct events every now and then. But mostly, uh, so some people have here. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. So, in very contrast to what uh, Subin told, I come from Jagdalpur, Chhattisgarh. Anybody here from Chhattisgarh? Yeah, you are there. Anybody else? No. So you can see the state, right? Uh, so if you look at the map of people who can code state-wise, the percentage, Chhattisgarh and 
some of the states come at the very bottom. Like only 0.9 or 1% people can write a line of code. So that's the state. And even from Chhattisgarh, right, where I come from is a very small town in Bastar. It's like, uh, uh, we call it Adivasi Ilaka. Uh, if you have heard of it, Naxalites. Uh, yeah, Naxal. So you might have heard of it from Naxal as news presents it. But normally there is no violence. But in general, what the point I'm trying to make is, it's tier 2, tier 3, what uh, really means, I guess, you guys could also share, but first let me start so you can then pick up from there. So there was, I didn't have heard of FOSS in reality other than the definition till I joined Frappe. So that's the reality. Not in school, everywhere, uh, in school there were computer labs, of course there are computer labs, but Windows, so everyone knows Windows. But I would say, uh, that the problems, right, were not the schools. So there was no active, okay, you can do this using a computer. That education was not there. We have a lab, this is a mouse, this is a keyboard, and you can run whatever you like, right? So in a sense, not that enlightened, you can say. Uh, but how I did was going through self-learning. Nowadays, there is internet, you can do a lot of stuff. But to do that as well, you need the device and the internet, right? So that privilege I had, which a lot of people, I'm pretty sure don't have in uh, localities such as Bastar, right? The government takes initiative, like distributing tablets, and then even if you get the device right, you don't know the resource. You don't know where to start. You can do a, so every, Coin has two sides, right? One side is like you can learn and become something or either you can use that technology to do Instagram all day. No offense, but that's a point, right? So even what I saw growing up, even in my high school was a lot of uh, my classmates and everyone, the tech was social media, right? It was not the actual tech we, are, we talk about now in conferences and everything. So that was a problem, uh, but somehow, I don't know how I got lucky, I stumbled upon a course, a free course somewhere, and then it got me hooked into programming. And that's where the real journey began. But the point is that to create that hook, right? To create that uh, thing where like the normal flow of your career breaks, and even from smaller towns you can basically do anything in the tech industry. So I want to talk more about that, what that hook was for you, how did you like break the chain of the conditions, what hurdles did you face, and what you do now, yeah. So, like before going to, uh, uh, going to my story, uh, so I want to tell about my district. So uh, what are the things Ha happened in uh, my district. So my district name is Vilupram. So it is uh, uh, it is a district in Tamil Nadu. So uh, it is uh, it is basically a, a, a like educationally backward district. It is uh, second loss uh, uh, s from the loss. It is a second place. It is in second place. So uh, in that city, the ba uh, like in Vilupram, it is ba basically the uh, work. Work is an agriculture. It is a b basic work. So, uh, in uh, from it uh, and and also Vilupram having a lot of panchayats. So, p uh, students who are in a Vilupram, uh, they are not even uh, uh, the, they are not even uh, having the basic internets. Not not even having the laptops. Not even having the electricity. So, like in in the in in this in the village. So in their houses, they are not, uh, most of the time they are facing the ele ele electricity issue. So in from this situation, so students are coming from this background. They are going to the schools. They are going to the colleges. They uh, for going to the colleges, how they are going? So they have to travel around two to three kilometers from their homes for getting the best. 
So that is the first bus. Uh, it is like uh, uh, one for one day. It is only a two bus. One in morning, one in ev uh, evening. So they they have to took the bus for the uh, for the for going to the colleges. So they travel and then they pick the bus. They they went to the college. So th this is how happened. Uh, even in school, in even in schools also. So they have to travel this much distance. So because in uh, in in Vilapuram district in villages, so there is not not enough schools and colleges. So they travel this much distance uh, and then they study. After that, what they are doing? So people uh, uh, in Vilapuram uh, almost 16 engineering colleges. People are studying. Uh, uh, mo most of the people are studying engineering and then arts and science. After studying this, what they are doing? So they are not going to the uh, uh, proper job what they studied. So uh, what they did is, if they, uh, if the students uh, completed the uh, engineer, uh, computer course or otherwise uh, any one of the uh, 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 engineering course. So uh, uh, they are doing like uh, billing work in the textile shop, uh, and then uh, like in other uh, in in other shop they are doing a uh, billing work. So this is what they are doing. So like uh, in this situation, like uh, we 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 are working on that. We are we are working in one model. We have an agenda. So uh, like uh, we started a Vigluck Foundation in 2000. 13 so uh, in this uh, district we uh, we are implementing the these things like uh, we are promoting the fas to the grassroots uh, we are we are using fas as a tool to eradicate the poverty so we are we, uh, we are uh, promoting uh, fas especially for the women so according uh, like uh, we are giving education to the women so we are it, it means we are giving education to the entire family so uh, that's what Nehru nice. said. So this is how we are working. So let mm -hmm. makes sense. So how uh, growing up, what was the pivot point for you? Like, okay, I want to do this, and I want to make a career out of this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like how how I overcome this situation? Like, um, uh, like in my home. So I am the like. Uh, I'm a single parent child, so from that I'm not. A, uh, I did a lot of uh, um, part-time jobs for studying uh, for studying the f uh, for my higher studies. So after that, uh, I came to know about the Vigluck. So I study uh, like uh, I attend a lot of meetups in Vigluck. So then I came to know about the Python. So and then uh, like after that every year we went to the week like because like weekend every weekend I went to the job uh, so uh, like I skipped off day uh, in Sunday I skipped off day work I, I went to I went to week look for learning the so new you didn't things. have like a holiday on Saturday Sunday like the whole work you were working the yeah week. yeah like uh, for, uh, Monday to Friday I went to the job and then uh, weekend usually I went to the part time job so uh, by using that amount I went to the college so this is how uh, I uh, I came from this background then I uh, uh, like I went to the week I came to int uh, I came to know about the week uh, through my co uh, college one of the professor uh, uh, he, his name is Jay Chandran so he he introduced uh, about the week leg and then I, I went to the week leg and then uh, I, I met some of the Persons, uh, some persons in week like so, uh, and then he uh, from there to here, like it's almost eight years went. So, so that was your hook point, right? Yes. Your professor introducing you about week like. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now we can. Um, yes. Uh, so I could resonate a lot of uh, things from what Viji said right now uh, because um, Salem, as a place, uh, is is known much about like we we also have good industrial sort of a development into steel, sago, and uh, those sort of like a business uh, sort of a active area. But then when it comes to tech uh, focused, um, you know, interest of tech focused institutions, um, or, you know, we also have uh, the, the city as such is a smaller one, but then we're surrounded a lot by different 
rural uh, areas and uh, uh, these these are the places where you know the the students um, get introduced to education models and uh, that's where uh, the point of contact of like what computers are starts from and uh, yeah typically uh, getting into my background of uh, accessing my first computer was only after i finished my um, 12th grade or something uh, i could get a get a, like i had to convince people at home to get me an internet connection or get my own laptop or um, for for ways uh, things now uh, now now uh, getting to the understanding of whether this is my interest or you know do i have something else in my passion coming along so this in itself takes a long of a lot of process because you you're introduced to the technology very late and uh, and by the time i have to already choose you know whether i i'm good getting into an engineering college or um, or something else that i want to pursue and uh, that's that's exactly where you know i knew that you know i i want I want to code, or like I want, I I have some exploration towards like some logical uh, reasoning or like logical conditions and stuff. So um, and and it was very very lesser time for me to gauge between you know this is what my future is going to be. But I I I just got into it. Now um, there there are um, again in in the in the town there are uh, less technical institutions, but which are really focused on um you know enhancing the core development or like you know giving such mentoring and everything but but um it was very surprising to see that the open source culture was not into place so i i graduated in 2018 from uh, from my bachelors um i studied in salem uh, but then uh, those days the uh, the open source or the open culture wasn't a word that we were hearing around but then once um, I mean, one day when there were these ambassadorship programs from different uh, different uh, companies that approached the institute, um, I found that there was this thing called a Mozilla Firefox. So again, I mean, bigger companies do not actually approach uh, you know smaller colleges. So it's not that they approached it; it was randomly a post that circulated in the institution. So. Uh, um, I mean, while while uh, I applied for the F Firefox Student Ambassadorship Program, um, I I little knew about what the browser is and uh, how it works. So this was in my second year um, of my engineering, and uh, uh, and and I, what I was more interested to know is like why do they want to promote internet health in India? What what is their objective of like you know whether uh, you know taking the word of open source to everyone? Uh, how how does it make sense? And eventually, I I registered for the for the ambassadorship program, got through the process, and the process by itself was like completely unknown to anyone because no, no one from from the place had actually tried for for the for the ambassadorship role. So uh, getting through the process and then um, and then finally landing into the role and understanding all of that was was in itself uh, because uh, we primarily are more used to the local language and trying. Um, and trying to interact and uh, develop an ecosystem of uh, you know people who who are uh, not much of like English spoken areas, but then um, but then the ambassadorship role did have a lot of people from different countries and stuff. Now uh, getting into the thing was like you know we didn't know I didn't know where the community lied, what was open source, what, what internet health is. There were different things which remain jargon to me and. Uh, Getting started, uh, I was totally like, "What I'm actually trying to do here," but instead, I would get, you know, for the works that I do, like, you know, promote about open source, promote about Mozilla's uh, products or Firefox in the uh, in the college or in the community in the vicinity I live. Uh, they, I would earn some badges, so that sort of like, you know, kept me engaged for the uh, thing. But then I, I wasn't really sure what I'm doing or like, you know, where is this community? And then finally found there was a community for uh, this in India. It was called Mozilla India. And uh, then there were regional communities. Um, you know, then I was able to dig down deep into who who's the nearest approach. So we, we always look out for that nearest approach to get started with first. So uh, and then uh, again, there was another challenge because um, in the community, there were no women. 
uh, especially in the regional community, there were very less. I mean, there was no women. Uh, it was I. I could clearly remember my friend and me were the first women to join that uh, regional uh, Mosla club, and uh, then the Mosla India as such was also big. But then there were very less women in the community. So uh, that's another uh, thing we wanted to figure out about how women could we could promote more women into the community. What what sort of projects could be you know made enable for them, and what are again their uh, the specific challenges for women in accessing uh, these first communities. And uh, then we started to put a word around, you know, uh, I mean, we started to uh, interact with other regional members about how these work in their ecosystems. Um, you know, if there is a similar model, uh, if it is working in another uh, rural area, how, how does it work for them? So as uh, Vijay said, these are all places which are not really connected or like with very low bandwidth networks or they don't have electricity and uh, uh, I mean, it, it, it has been, and also it's like FOSS is something not into, it is not something introduced as part of your academia. So people have to devote, uh, you know, extra time for this. And uh, so coming from those uh, challenges, we started to build that small ecosystems. Uh, we made sure, and, and of all, it's like the experienced ones who, who get graduated from these colleges, or let's say they want to learn and want to go for higher higher studies of education, they start they start to migrate from the town to some some other place, which eventually becomes a, another big tire city. So um, that's that's the um, disadvantage or like you know the um, the low note about you know while 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 the two tire or the three tire city is not able to equip uh, tech tech based companies in their own ecosystem. So uh, that's where we are now bridging those gaps to, as even part of the Women in Tech Collectives, what we do is we try to bridge those gaps of like how to enable remote working for women in a way that they can also take care of themselves, their families and everything. And uh, also uh, how, how these women can sustain their traditional work models with tech. So that in a way can also you know, keep them uh, you know, sustained into their uh, own uh, places and um, we, we just want this open source to continue in the town uh, and it, it shouldn't stop because you know someone has moved out of the city or someone is not there um, to promote about this. So we want it to keep going for people nice. and reach it. Yeah. Makes sense. So before we go to Subin, like two points that I could relate to was one is about convincing parents to get you a device to learn or a laptop. Basically for me, it was tough. Uh, Zid is what I did, so it's mean like I want it, I want it, but ultimately I convinced my father, so I told him that you visit bank every day, like, I will do ba net banking for you. Oh. So that at that point he got convinced and got the laptop, but ever since I'm, uh, then I'm doing net banking, but the benefits are good, right? So. Uh, and the second point was people leaving the towns, right? So in Jagdalpur, we have one engineering college. So that is a government engineering college, GEC. And there is IT courses, there are everything, but whoever wants to do it, right? They can't do it in Jagdalpur. So usually you will find that the batch uh, comes out. Most of them, they leave Jagdalpur. They either go to Bangalore or Mumbai and Hyderabad. So the remain, the state of Jagdalpur remains the same. <laughs> that was one thing I could relate to. So people leave, right? Because there is no infra. So you can't get a developer job in Jagdalpur. That's for sure. But I assume like, I'm pretty sure that is changing fast due to remote work. That is changing. Uh, but yeah, that's how, like slowly we'll get there. We'll discuss about the solutions, but let's hear it from Subin. Yeah. Uh, so I, at least for me, I, I, the students in Kerala, it's way, uh, easier, I would say, because schools already had GNU Linux. Uh, so Andhra software was already a thing in Kerala when I was born, at least. Uh, so there were like many people before me who tried to change the policy of the government to move into a, a Sondra software kind of line. So since all those things were already in set, it's much more easier for students in Kerala to do it. So in Kerala, there's this annual event called Shastra also. It's basically like a science fair thing. And it, ha it has an IT competition section. And, and I, th I think it was there for, I think, since 2005 or something. So there are like four or five competitions in there. One is digital painting. 
So everything should be free software, using free software. So digital painting using GNU GIMP or Inkscape, uh, no, just GNU GIMP. And Malalan typing using a software in GNU Linux. Uh, who has the most speed in typing Malalan? So there's one competition like that. Uh, third competition, I think, was web page designing. So who makes the better web page, pure HTML, CSS, JS? Uh, there's a competition for that. And uh, so like one more competition. Uh, ITQs was also there. So four competitions, uh, sub-district level, district level, state level. And this has been a thing for many years now. So I, uh, I used to participate in that. And I could see many people, uh, many students, uh, already doing things with. Some people like draw really beautiful stuff with GIMP using mouse only. I had a friend like that. So like, wow, you can, he doesn't even use a digital tablet. He uses a mouse to create beautiful artworks using GIMP. And uh, since these technologies are introduced to students in very early age, they're curious about it. That's a good, very prime age for kids to learn these things. And GNU Linux has uh, a lot of software that will help in curiosity. So there's this distribution, there's this custom distribution that is used in Kerala schools called uh, Kite Linux. It used, to, it used to be called IT at school. It's a fork of Ubuntu. And they include all these educational tools in that software and that open system itself. So there was this one instance in Attapadi, it's like a rural, very rural part in Kerala. So there, has, there is a, uh, less internet access and uh, uh, electricity problems as well. So uh, there was this news report that I saw two years back about uh, everybody's receiving laptops from government using this GNU Linux distribution. So all of these tools are all offline. So kids could use that. And this, this report was, I saw that the report is that uh, uh, the kid is receiving laptops, but the, the house doesn't have electricity. So how does that work? And uh, the, but the, when I saw in the report was that uh, the kid was playing that, uh, uh, the kid was saying, what do you do on your laptop? And I'm playing games. So uh, the reporter is showing the game and that game is Gcompris. Gcompris is a software, uh, uh, an educational software. There's a lot of tools in that. It's not actually a game, I would call it. It's a game for little kids to learn things. So, so I'm, I'm at least happy that the kid is learning Gcompris, not a game game. So, mm -hmm. uh, so because this distribution is already there, uh, it, it can be, and most of these things are offline. I think kids in Kerala are pretty good. And there's this clubs thing called Little Kites. So Little Kites is a clubs in almost every uh, government school in Kerala. So kids get introduced to Arduino, Raspberry Pi. Um, so other software like in more, in kind of depth, I'm not sure. I, there was no Little Kites when I was in school. But it, it is now there, and there's competitions for that. And the kids who are excelling more in that gets uh, attention in a state level kind of thing. So that thing has been happening in Kerala for at least the five, six years now. So I think. It, uh, Kerala okay, students has the best, uh, uh, kids can use that. Uh, in, in my case, I think I got introduced to Linux, uh, GNU because of, uh, and this uh, textbook has the distinction. What is the difference between open source and free software? That is a distinction that I think would be only click after a while uh, when you grow up. I, I couldn't click that until I was in 2017. Uh, it was in textbooks, but kids can't, kids can't realize the freedom part until a bit later, I think. And so, uh, because all of this, and uh, one more thing is that uh, I remember someone, I think it's Praveen, uh, I'm not sure who was, uh, he did a cycle campaign from Trivandrum, from the very end of south of Kerala to north of Kasargod spreading free software. So he did a whole cycle yatra. I think that was done like two, three times. Uh, this was back in 2010 or 2011. I, I looked through the records and I could see uh, very passionate people about this. So those people influenced the government to do this and that was really good. So. And I think if that, if this still momentum, and uh, Kerala released their new IT policy last week, and they're still continuing with free software, and they're going to shift to Debian now. Uh, so Ubuntu has these problems. Uh, so they, uh, they're like, uh, we're going to move to Debian now. Uh, nice. And we are kind of volunteering for that as well. So community is there, government is there, people are there, they're in communication. So every district has a free software community. So I think it's, it's going good, and I hope it stays that. Makes sense. Yeah. How many people from Kerala here? It shows, right? Okay. <laughs> Clearly shows. What they are doing, the initiatives are working. So that's what we need to do for other states as well. That's clear. But before we go to, we, we discuss the problems. The problems seem pretty clear. Uh, resources, some place, somewhere, direction is missing. So I'll share a small story, uh, an incident. So I was in standard 11th. I, it was my first day at the school. And I had picked mathematics as my subject. So you choose a subject when you pass 10th and go for 11th. Because I wanted to do computer science, because I was like hooked into it, and I wanted to do computer science, and computer science only came with mathematics. That was the only uh, deal, that you get physics, chemistry, maths, along with, like then you have an additional computer science component. And other people could choose Hindi, uh, so there was an option to choose Hindi language. So I went there, uh, we were all sitting the, a lot of people choose computer science because it sounds fancy, right? Who will go to Hindi? 
And then the teacher walks in. Uh, he says, like, computer science is hard. Programming is hard. If you check the last year's list, the most people who failed are in computer science. So if you want to leave, leave right now. That just still, I don't know, I don't feel nice whenever I think about it. Four of the students went up right, like stand, stood up and went to the Hindi class. I mean, why, why would someone like discourage? So that's the state. And then after four years, I'm telling you, those same people who left right, they went to the colleges for B.Tech because you had chosen maths, you will do B.Tech. So that's the thing. So they say, we should, have, we should have chosen computer science because now anyways we, are, we have to learn programming in our engineering courses. So most of what I do is towards that, that I want to fix the problem. I do, I'm not blaming the teacher. I'm saying the state of CS education, the CS formal education is not that great. Any, any place, I have heard it from my colleagues as well. Uh, you might also uh, know this, that this is the state. And one of the solutions that I will start with, then you, you can add what you think could be done to improve this situation is to create more entry points, right? So I, for me, the entry point was having uh, access to the internet and YouTube. That was the entry point. And a free course, of course, there should be guidance. The technology is there, but the guidance that, okay, there is something called FOSS. And actually, this means this, that this is an operating system that is FOSS, and this is one that is not, right? So that difference I didn't know till very late. So that. We can start with that, but yeah, you guys can add. What do you think could have been better like in your life if it was already there, the solution, right? So like uh, what we we are uh, implementing in our district is so initially uh, like uh, in our district, so uh, people's, uh, they are not, they don't know about the, uh, uh, they are not having the laptop not uh, no, don't know about this uh, softers even even software who are, uh, the p the students who are studying in engineering colleges com yeah, especially uh, computer science they they know how to how to switch on the system but uh, the they know uh, they know like uh, if if system is on uh, they ensure uh, these things by this windows logo so the system is on like uh, they don't know about the free and open source softwares. So um, what we we are doing is uh, for uh, for applying the uh, any of the jobs like for up, uh, uh, for paying the co college fees, they went to the browsing center. Even I am also went to the browsing center for uh, uh, for uh, doing uh, for applying uh, uh, sorry uh, for paying fees for pay the fees. Uh, so like uh, how. We implemented this thing. How uh, how we tackle this situation is like uh, so. Uh, we uh, we did a survey uh, like uh, peoples who are using uh, like after the geo arrival, uh, they got the internet. They and then uh, in Tamil Nadu they are providing the free laptops uh, uh, for plus one and plus two students. So uh, students uh, got these resources. They have an internet. They have a laptop. But by using that, the students what they are doing that is the question mark. So and um, that is a lock, uh, lack. That is no uh, no other organization, no, no other community communities to mentoring them. So like uh, mentor mentor is mentoring the students is the important thing. So like uh, by using the internet, what uh, students is, students are doing like uh, uh, they are uh, they are simply watching the movie. So and then, uh, uh, like, um, if, if they want to know about something, something about uh, that, uh, something about the first, other uh, something about the uh, 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 things in in education side, they they went to the YouTube. They they just watched that uh, five minutes video. Uh, after that, they went to that sa saturated level. Like uh, they know they 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 know uh, all the things. 
they know like, everything yeah they know everything like they went to that saturated level like uh, so after that they saw stop like uh, what are the further things that so uh, and then they in this days in schools also they are getting like ebook they are getting the ebook so if if we, uh, they thought like uh, uh, if i have a ebook so i it it is with me it in all, all the times i we i, I, I can open that book in every time uh, sorry uh, uh, any time so the uh, that point uh like uh, it's it's the point uh like uh, the students are not not having the curious to learn about the new things and all so um, uh, because of this resource um um be, be because of this resource and then this that internet the social media in they are more they are spending most of the time in the uh, social media so like we uh, we did a initiatives like uh, called 100 glucks 100 villages we started uh, glucks in the villages so uh, like how to uh, use this internet in a proper way so uh, like we found the f- uh, things in in fast uh, only in fast community only we can learn everything we can share our knowledge apart from that uh, classroom structure so in uh, in week leg like meetups why students are g- coming uh, continuously coming to the meetups no, that, that is the uh, the question is like uh, in, in week leg like, uh, meetups we we are giving the freedom apart from the classroom uh, we are br- breaking the classroom culture so we uh, we uh, there is no uh, restriction we can share what we learned uh, uh in classroom there there is no freedom to uh, share our point I, I even i have faced this issue so we uh, in me, uh, while while conducting the meetups uh, we not only we, we are promoting the fast we we are uh, like uh, in other non tech side uh, like uh, we are um, dev- um, like uh, n- no uh, we are promoting like non technical sessions like uh, we are reading the books re- book reading session and then um uh, screening movie screening so we are uh, uh, doing these things um be, and then uh, in 100 villages 100 glucks uh, we are doing like uh, every weekend we went to the village we start where we started the glucks so we, we are doing some uh, some of the activities like we are uh, uh, by using the scratch we are uh, teaching the, them to how to develop at gaming and all so uh, we uh, we plan to utilize this resource in, is, in a is useful way so and then uh, after that we we started a trainings um like uh, fast based trainings so um uh, almost every every year we are doing a training so we selected a students who are coming from the poor economic background so uh, this is uh, but we are ensuring these things uh, how is how uh, usually it is a open call for students are applying uh, uh, applying to the tra- they, they apply to the trainings we got almost 1000 plus registration right. uh but we gave tri- uh, training only for the 100 students B- we went uh, for uh, first round of interview we uh, we selected around 500 students uh, like in that we have a certain criteria so like uh, uh, it's it should uh, like uh, first graduate and then um, uh, it should uh, women uh, like sh- uh, not only women we are ensuring the off of the percentage women at least percentage now. so like um these are all the things we ensuring like uh, what are the their uh, uh, th- their economic background we usually ask them some of the questions so in in first round of interview then we went directly to their houses uh, because every weekend they have to come like uh, uh, for uh, reducing the dropouts so we went to uh, we went to the their houses and then we ensuring they are uh, presence in every weekend uh, weekend classes so this is how we are currently doing in uh, are you seeing any change yes like are you seeing any change of mm. what the state was before and after the initiative in the whatever years you have been doing this yeah actually uh, after completing this training we are um, uh, like uh, we are giving the uh, 
internships mm -hmm. so we are connected uh, so uh, here um, we are who are working in a IT company so we usually uh, sp uh, speak with the uh, companies we usually uh, then we are referring the students who are uh, data training in a week like we are uh, um, refer those students to the companies for the internship we are providing the, then we are involving those students for developing the projects nice would any anything you want to add to this or to how the initiatives are working for you as well. You you mentioned you are doing some work in the same uh, field. Sure. Uh, so as uh, Viji rightly mentioned about uh, FOSS, uh, so while we take the FOSS uh, into just specific of tech or computer science is what, you know, isn't a uh, very uh, specific, um, it's not very specifically applicable for certain groups. So we need to take a very holistic approach of FROS um, so that, you know, people who are uh, passionate in their own, own fields, in their own projects, because FROS is not just meant for tech or coding. Um, it's in STEM. It's uh, in, uh, you know, people who want to also uh, develop passion for music, uh, performing arts. Everywhere there is FOSS, like someone showed about embedded systems before. So. There is force everywhere, and th this awareness is is sl slightly lesser, especially while they are in the face of academia, because uh, for the reasons you know um, of lack of support and resource, of course, and uh, and also that you know someone to represent from those uh, communities, and and uh, also um, you know to to represent ourselves in a bigger way. So for example, if I have to know how FOSS is working in a larger module or like, uh, you know, I, I was working in Bangalore three years ago, so I could get that understanding of how FOSS culture is and how it's in a very big way and it's not like a small thing that I was actually thinking about. And uh, I wanted people from my town to also celebrate FOSS as a very wider, uh, you know, access and, uh, you know, it has a lot of things to it. It's just not, about you know um, you know coding a piece of um, you know program or just about that right so um, so and and also to do all of these sort of a bigger things you know and get them access to these sort of a bigger community and it it, it requires again a lot of logistics and everything to it so uh, why we we happen to make a first hybrid uh, module of CDJs India in our town where we uh, brought in. Uh, around 50 to uh, 60 women and uh, people of uh, force enthusiast to gather around a space uh, speakers were from different countries and different places and we gathered around them in an institution in uh, Salem and uh, it was their first experience of like what a force conference is or force talk is and uh, how things work behind it and of course with you know, sort of, uh, I, I, I also attended this mini deb which we Gluck did uh, recently, and uh, that's also a way to, you know, bring in people from different places to your town and get them that experience of, you know, force is also happening here, force is also possible here. And uh, that's how the interest in the local also happens. Great. And um, also the diversity scholarship with the FOSS United nice. was very helpful in bringing 15 members from our community from various places and it's their first time uh, of conference, experiencing a FOSS conference. But we do have the other left out community out there who couldn't make it. So um, that's where, you know, the gap of, uh, you know, what I mean as a FOSS culture needs to happen in every place uh, and needs to be celebrated in a bigger way. Uh, and recognized yes. so so that it it's an integral part of everyone's uh, life and also uh, as it supports the family and traditions that the family also includes so uh, someone is into music uh, family uh, someone is doing music um, from a long time and they develop um, you know a module in open source to integrate um, a virtual band um, 
sort of a thing. So that that was something that they developed over the pandemic uh, from the community, which nice. had helped them to you know reach music to various places. And also the same way, there are a lot of uh, handloom and weavers around um, in our uh, town. So they wanted um, you know how to automate those systems and how to uh, you know. Uh, develop uh, their systems uh, using tech and embedded uh, systems plus create an ERP for their family you know nice. uh, to keep a track of you know uh, all the sales so all these are now going through open source and helping their own families so the families now know what forces and uh, now women are able to more uh, be part of this yeah, it's and easier to for yes, them to contribute exactly and also uh, the inclusive environment which we work with the neurodivergence is also in a similar way where we want to integrate open education uh, for them to you know contribute and there are specific again hardware and software um, so we also tap into what accessibility is and what web accessibility or like how in general technology requires accessibility as a very essential factor um, we are able to explore because of these uh, you know initiatives that we could bring in nice. through FOSS. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. I think we are out of Time? I just but yeah, yeah, you can add. So yeah. I was coming to you. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Five minutes more? Perfect. Or people are hungry, but fine. So yeah, I just want to discoverability is a very big problem because I, I published my first uh, software thing in 2013, but I didn't know there was a community in my own town. So how it happened was a telegram. So telegram launched was in 2015, and all these uh, people, they were, I don't know how they communicated before. Uh, metrics was later thing, right? I think. So uh, these communities, they all started uh, district-wise groups. So Trishur had a group, Kochi had a group, Trivandrum had a group, everyone, the community members always started a group. So I somehow came to, I think uh, there was this group called GNU Linux Love or something. Very weird name, but yeah. So there was this Telegram group there, and I, when I got into the Telegram group, I liked GNU Linux, so, and I found out that everyone is a Malayali in there. So I thought it was an international group or something, but I found that it was created by a Malayali, uh, uh, the members, most of them are Malayali, and that's how I know, oh, there were already people here. I think it's kind of stupid that I didn't think that before uh, because they were already gnulings in Kerala. I should have expected there should be a community, but I didn't. So, uh, and I went to my first meetup in 2017 only, and it was from the Telegram group. I met people, Reddit also. So, on Reddit too, I found out that uh, there are people who are also uh, as programmers as me, and that's how I discovered Sondra Malayalam Computing, and that's how I hope uh, there are Malaya uh, Sondra software people working on the language itself. And that was wow. And uh, that's how I started contributing to Sonam and then became a member of SMC. And now I maintain an input tool to type Indian languages on computers. So I, because I met the community later, I got into these projects that I liked. But I, some, I, I now these days wish that I had known this before. So how do you discover these communities? I, I would say is the internet is the best place. Uh, internet, uh, find people similar to these things. You can find groups, uh, Telegram, metrics, Reddit. And then you can find by people, and then you can organize a meetup in your city, and that's how I think is the best way to approach this problem. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. So the general theme was create more entry points, entry connect points with the communities. Everything. Yeah. Free sort of people have this problem of siloing, bubbling them into metrics or things. Yeah. I am of the opinion that uh, you should be impressed on Instagram or Facebook anyway, proprietary. Yeah. But still, uh, there should be like entry points at multiple places. Yeah, multiple places. So that's my point, right? So trainings. Trainings are a good way to go. You have to reach out to them that, okay, this is the thing, but as you said, like this is the right way to use it and right way to learn. Yeah, I guess anything more to add? But yeah, if someone from Chhattisgarh government is listening, I am happy to collaborate. Let's, let's get FOSS all over India. Let's get trainings and new initiatives. And slowly, it will happen, right? So yeah. Thanks. Questions? Yeah. Mike. Uh, right. So um, from yesterday and today, you know, I was listening to a lot of talks about policy. And, and today, this, um, this was a very interesting thing. So just one thing that I wanted to add was, you know, we were talking about um, introducing, you know, these, these entry points. So one thing that I think is, is sort of important, and I, I will lead into a question here, is sort of lowering that barrier for entry, right? So I think that is also, because you know, you can create entry points, right? Because the internet is available. But how do you make this, you know, sort of 
let people access this. So um, I come from, you know, I come from Kerala. So I think a lot of us, you know, sort of um, think, okay, you know, FOSS is uh, sort of pretty much accepted everywhere. But it is, I feel like it's a sort of privilege, right? Because in Kerala, I think because the government does so much, let's say the Kerala government does so much to, you know, you, I, I related to a lot of what Subin was talking about before, because if, when I was in school, um, all our computers had Linux on it. You know, we, we all had GIMP and everything on it. So, um, so tying into something that was talked in before, I think, you know, we're, we're such a big community here, right? So we can, th there is a lot we can do as, you know, an external private community or something, but how about influencing policy? Or, you know, thinking about how the government can actually step in, because, you know, I, the only reason I'm talking to this is because I know that there are people here, you know, who are into law, who are into policy. So I think maybe, you know, it's something that obviously at the grassroots level, you know, I, I heard what you all are talking about. So maybe lowering the barrier for entry and I think the government, you know, is a very important place, is a place where we can start because the Kerala government is doing it. Why can't we do it in Karnataka? Why can't we do it all over India? So we need a new IT policy, right? So are there anything you can add about this or, you know, something like that? Uh, one point I have to add is that I um, influencing policy is something that I'm still, uh, we had a whole discussion yesterday from SMC, like how do you influence policy? I'm not sure about this, but I think there are some seniors here uh, who has done it. Uh, I think those people can answer better, uh, but I'm still figuring it out. Like how do you influence government policy is a very good question. Yeah. So uh, like in, in Villapram, uh, we have requested an IT park. Uh, 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 to MP, so uh, now government passed a GO that uh, construction work is also going on. So this is how we uh, like. Uh, for, uh, this is how we started. While starting the, we, this is how we are doing. So because while starting uh, the IT uh, implementing IT park is the biggest thing because uh, in Vilipram type of districts. So uh, they, pa they passed the GO. Uh, after after that uh, we can. Uh, give the jobs to them. Uh, like job is the main thing. After studying these things, uh, uh, like related uh, what we related to what we studied, we have to do that job. So that that is the initiative. Like uh, we we yeah. So we did the initiative. So and then I want to add one more point. Uh, so uh, this. Uh, starting uh, like we can uh, like we have to uh, start this this type of fast communities in our district uh, that main main thing is mm, it is it should be active so we can start um, uh, we can start one or uh, we, we can start the community but after that what we, uh, what uh, what it when it, uh, how it went so that is the thing so it should be active so that is the main thing so, uh, like, uh, we have to engage ourselves into the community. Yeah, I think you made a good point. Entry levels are fine, but they should be lower, right? They should come from the very start, not too late. Uh, another entry point thing is that a Telegram group is like anybody can just join. But there I see some gatekeeping in some communities uh, that I've seen. Uh, I think free sort of communities are really good in that. You just join the Telegram group, you just pick an issue. I think that's the lowest entry point that one can have, and not gatekeeping at all. And that, that's a very good thing about force communities. Yeah, so be transparent, be open to everyone, be inclusive, okay. Yeah, a new member joined, right? Yeah. Like, let's help him out. That's a good and thing. Sometimes it, it doesn't even need to be that. Like, yeah. let, them, let them be on his own, uh, let them ask questions. That's also fine. Yeah, and lowest barrier, no pressure, just do your thing, just ask questions. Yeah, makes sense. Another question. Hi, uh, my name is Paul, and I also had questions regarding the Telegram group, but I think I have a much more uh, solvable problem. Uh, so uh, this is not regarding the tele Telegram thing. So uh, I'm from Rajagiri, like in Kerala, and uh, my mom used to work in the kindergarten department, and uh, I know a I know the person who runs the system administration there. And he was like suggesting, he was, I was talking to him regarding like what, what all can we do to, you know, like help uh, educate the kids regarding Linux and all those things. And he wasn't aware of like, you know, what all things that can be done there. He like, as of now, I think it's mostly like Windows based. I think they are doing Azure and all. I'm not sure. But uh, if, do you have any like suggestions as to like, I think you were mentioning about the Kite operating system. 
yeah so do you have any sort of like suggestions that i can maybe tell them and may maybe implement in you know their uh it at school the uh, i think the distribution is not kite right yeah 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 uh, so the distribution is available to download from kite's website kite.kerala.go.in so you can okay. directly download the iso so if yeah, this is checking the website yeah so system admin can directly install i think it's mostly installed in many uh, uh, places uh, even in low end computers okay uh, so that would be the easiest way and the software the os come pre default with lot of things kids can play with especially kindergarten kids gcompress is a good software that i would have gcompress g c o m p r i s gcompress software is i think the most playable thing tux tux cart is on this game tux paint yeah, yeah. uh, tux paint is the uh, there and uh, there is a thing called uh, fet uh, it's a it's a a uh, physical uh, no it's a physics experimental lab kind of thing uh, kids can explore like the os has is has the bare bones to explore. understood uh, but all these things are mostly from like if you are like lp or up or you know no no g commerce is very uh, kindergarten it's very so. okay yeah. cool i'll i'll tell him that then thank you i'm sorry to interrupt but i think we'll run late of time sure sure Yeah. Um thank you all for your patience and thank you all to all the speakers for your wonderful inputs on this topic.